a river brick doesn't tell me anything for that rest sack, so I think it's slightly better to just get it in. But yeah, I expect him to have queens and kings just all the time and some ace jack, but we are in here. <laughs> just all the equity in the world, ace jack. People have what they rep. That's just the thing. Let's give it a go. I fired up four tables already. Unfortunately, I think stars was down until half an hour ago or so. That means that there was no Zoom 500 running so far. I got that one table up, uh, open in the top left now. I will switch back and forth. Uh, the other three tables are Zoom 200. As you probably can see, I'm here on a new setup. Yeah, I moved successfully to Vienna. Everything seems smooth so far. I got the first sessions in, so you will see me a little more in the high stakes streets again. Main point is I'm free to play all kinds of stuff again. That's uh, pretty decent. Sports, squeezing aces, a7-5. I guess I play with the checking range there and then aces sometimes go in there. So I randomize a little. I try to play somewhat close to uh, whatever uh, theory tells us. Uh, betting is both fine, checking is fine. A big bet is not okay. Check, check. I think this is definitely his sport, but kings want to keep checking. Queens want to keep checking some weak aces. Um, so yeah putting that in here as a, as a protection. Uh, he has plenty of reasons to start uh, bluffing when he has a little something there. And now I guess um, my kings are all good enough to value bet. My weak aces are good enough to value bet. So I want to put that in the same range, obviously hoping to get raised. Uh, this looks pretty decent. Definitely take some time here to jam then. Uh, okay. Getting the fold, pretty much what I expected. Top right, let's focus on that though. Um, flush draw in that squeeze pot. I think with that stack death there, uh, I'm just going for half pot uh, to then jam mainly turns. Um, Clem 90 is, is forced to play super face up and against him, I'm just getting it in. So um, yeah, good luck us. Oh, just a set. Uh, that's not a good card. Call the three bad, we sometimes four bad, we sometimes call. Um, now facing half pot on the board, that is very good for us. I sometimes donk there even. Um, definitely calling, but it's already close. And now I think again, donking can be an option. And I roll a number where I actually like it. I'm not 100% sure. Mainly this is just because all his ear that he might have didn't improve and the eight gives me some more good hands. Uh, it's more the fact that he didn't improve with his ace, king, ace, queen and so on. That should be good enough to make it a donk bet. And now the 10 should still be strong enough for a block bet, 6x, pocket nines in his range, some 10x. Easy to play 10s the same way, have some nutted hands and happy with the fold. Flat and queens here, I think we mainly play call only here in that spot. Queens with diamonds uh, won't be a Turn jam. This we could make an argument for raising a flop here with our equity with the queen of diamonds, but the big bet he's mainly wrapping like kings aces. Uh, some 10x that would be the benefit getting it in against 10x and jacks on the flop before there are cards that I don't like to see. This is just a call down, even though it we are not really beating too much value. Just folding that would be too much. I mean, my folds are mainly just flush draws. We are calling this. If he has kings or aces, he has it. That's okay. If he has king 10 suited, that's fine as well. Uh, that's what he's repping. Uh, he has aces. Interesting to know that he's just like really using that 75% bet on the flop with like all, all kinds of those hands. But king is a very bad card down here. So I'll guide you through the action quickly. Uh, I check raise versus a small C bet on that flop. The king is either over bet or check now. And here I rolled a check to play a fancy double check race because just I need to give up quite a lot on that king. That's just not my card. So I want to protect uh, with like something like that uh, and, and not only check give ups. I don't care about the clubs. Uh, we have clear clear value bet and uh, go for a somewhat normal sizing. Rejoining 500. Still hoping to get more players in there. So yeah, we got the pocket queens there. I think he played his hand fine. Uh, River, he's pretty much indifferent. I'm wrapping a king uh, or something like that. Um, and yeah, he is probably a, not a thousand percent mandatory catch, but a, but a decent candidate. So here, uh, let's just um, call that check raise. He's pretty much wrapping queens and kings. There's no reason for me to raise now. Uh, I have good information on the turn. So seeing more cards helps my hand. Uh, an eight is great, <laughs> hearts are great. Uh, it's like not something where I have the equity, but I don't know when it's good. These are the ones you want to jam in position. Now we have the thing, right? He might, I might be ahead with my nine, so it's just 
A river brick doesn't tell me anything for that rest sack, so I think it's slightly better to just get it in. But yeah, I expect him to have queens and kings just all the time and some ace-jack, but we are in here. <laughs> just all the equity in the world, ace-jack. Pretty much flipping. Ooh, people have what they rep. That's just the thing. We have so much action, I just got in without really telling you guys. Got in a stack here uh, with my set of nines. I just run you through the hand again. So we have a 3x open raise from an unknown uh, call, and then I overcall and big blind calls as well. And then uh, we have a half pot seabed, or no, a donk, actually a half pot donk from the big blind. Call from that overcaller from the cutoff. Uh, I just fast play. And on the double flush draw board, with a chance that this guy has the ace of diamonds or something, I'm just jamming here with pot size left. And um, yeah, calls me with 0% equity. That's great. 10-7 uh, suited, I uh, want to three bet 25% of the time. Uh, I rolled a race. I think here, mainly we use a big size to see bet. Uh, half pot is my big size. I size it slightly up because we are a little deeper. And that hand obviously is good enough to do so. I think... This is a bet, bet, check, call mainly, I would say. Checking now is an option as well, but I, ra I rather check my 10x of diamonds that do not have like the benefit of just being two pair. So here I want to build the pot and uh, just trying to dodge an eight or a jack and a six. Diamonds are obviously great. Anything else is great as well. Let's go. Seven, four, deuce with, uh, we have a hand that is an optional check raise if he decides to see that small um, and we roll a three and low numbers, as the regular stream watchers know, are my high frequency raises. Three is good, a six is good, an eight is good, a jack is obviously good, spades is good. I mean, um, a hand looks like I have nothing but lots of options on the turn. Uh, this is a board where I will improve a lot over time. And now this is interesting because everything improves. Everything that I'm check raising. Six, eight got there, three, six got there, ace, three got there. Uh, four or five got there, seven five got there. So actually, I can act I can get away with like some insane uh, bluffing. I didn't work on those spots lately too much. I mainly looked at that from like big blind versus under the gun, where it's more clear that villain doesn't have a shit. Uh, so I might be slightly off, but just like the. The main theory should be should be quite fine. King eight three um nine five. It's good to think about which flush draws are we check raising instead of just randomizing everything. So the first one of the strong region is like my ace deuce and queen deuce I'm raising just because I'm not blocking any of the weaker flushes. So actually like an ace deuce is better than an ace jack. Uh, because you have more flush over flush opportunities and those that can make a nice straight. Uh, where you have additional good stuff going on. So 9-7 would be more of one. This one is a mix for me, some good cards. I rolled a call just, and now it will mainly be a check race because continuing by check calling is not that great. And we have some nuts like King-7, like turn seven, something like that. And this is a pretty miracle straight here. Shouldn't have too many flush draws. Overbat is, is our play here. Uh, Villain went for a small check race here and block bet the turn. So, so far so standard. Um, and here I think I need to polarize or actually not. Just thinking about how thin do I go for value and do I want to split them into multiple sizes or not? And I think, oh, well, no, 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 well, time out, almost time out, needed to click. First act and then talk, I should learn that. Bottom right, this is usually a range bet, um, but with a small sizing, but against this 28-8 guy who seems very, very passive, I definitely want to bet bigger because he has all queen, jack, queen, nine, jack, nine offsuits, uh, and he's never going to raise. Yeah, now the question is what I do. I think check and get the maximum on the river, maybe. Don't see like getting three streets from bullshit. And now just hoping for something. I'm just now, now just playing against the 10, right? It's like uh, just really playing against one guy, putting him on a hand that I want to call and then get the maximum out of that. That's kind of the plan. And this is interesting by Jared Mann here, top left. Uh, I'm checking back very, very much on that board. So I have some sixes, not, not like plenty of sixes, uh, but he's attacking an ace right away. This is very, very certainly not a pio play. I have a super easy call with my flush draw. Now it's important to know that I, I did check back lots. Like, I mean, I can auto see by the hand like that as well. So that shows you already that I more thought about the board and, and built a, a check back range. And that contains quite some sixes. Now, okay, the overbats again, I'm actually just splitting if I call 
and he has a bluff, so it's like I'm calling 35 into 11.7 to win 11.7 or something. I think this is just, yeah, and either a strong assumption, which I think is not correct, that I have like, I'm lacking sixes there, or this is just exploitatively value heavy. Down here, um, this is four bat or call against tight players, even sometimes a fold, but usually not against the small bind. Everyone is loose enough from the small bind. I roll the call, so I'll let's follow up with that. Okay, the queen of clubs is not a good thing. Um, what is good stuff happening? Ace, queen, ace, king is pretty much not folding. So this should be a very, very close 200% check. Keep his king jack in there. Um, get the cooler on your side when you hit. Now the six is like a slightly better card for me than for him. He can have some overbats if he checked tens, jacks, queens with a plan to check raise. He can overbat now, ace nine and so on. And now is the question, is my king queen weak enough to bluff now? Obviously diamonds would be better. I randomize this sometimes in now. Diamonds is a higher frequency. This is how I approach that here. And I rolled a hundred, which is the least aggressive number I have. So it's a check again. And that eight, interesting. I think I'm betting most eight x on the turn. So I cannot really represent too much. If he checks to me again, I'm like value betting fives, fours, some three X. This is like sevens himself. I don't know. The block sizing seems a little weird, but okay. Let this one go. King queen suited against a cold four bat from someone who's marked a tight player, but he has four bat folds. Okay, that makes it better. Let's go with the standard play call. Hope to not run into ace king and kings when I hit. So uh, ace king and aces. I mean, not kings either, but that seems a little unlikely now. And I think this stuff gets, how's that gets fast played? Ace, X, Queens, Jacks, Tens. Du, du, du. I think this gets actually fast played. Uh, usually it helps a lot to just think about which part are you interested in to play against in those kind of spots. Here it's just like me accepting on the flop, okay, against aces, kings, ace, king, the money is in and I'm losing. Uh, that's fine. So I play against queens, jacks, tens, maybe nines even now, and some ace highs. Flush draw, backdoor flush draw, I'm unblocking those. So now the flush is pretty much a bad card. Now I check, um, but I think batting is fine as well. And against that range, I think the min raise makes the most sense. Now the ace got there, that's bad. He has still queens, jacks, tens. If he is the player type that that color means, like more than knit on the nitty side, he's not bluffing jacks with a jack of spades now. So I'm happy to check fold, but just like thinking about it before. You obviously can have traps like kings and the aces with the ace of spades, something like that. And there we have the jam. So let's move to the other four bat. I mean, I'm folding here. Uh, let's move to the other four bat pot. I called four bat exactly the same spot. This time I'm the aggressor. It was big blind versus small blind versus cutoff. I go for 25% on the flop. Um, I size up to third pot on the turn. And I think the four doesn't change too much. So I'm targeting King Jack suited, King 10 suited. He can still have Ace Queen. My bluffs are a little tougher to find, but this is good enough as a value jam. I ISO a limper and get three bat from the small blind. Lots of people see that as cutoff open and small blind three bat. Um, this is true if that he did post a blind, that was not the case. So this is actually more of a um, cold four bed pot just with a different SBR. So his range is way tighter than a normal three betting range. And uh, my calling range is tighter as well. So here I can step sometimes, I rolled a check back, um, but this is something that we should keep in mind here in those spots. Now the 10 improves some of my hands. I think I'm just attacking his ace queen, ace king now. Random king, queen. 